And what is up everybody, Jeremy here. And in this video, I wanted to share why cancer research matters. Let's go straight into it. So why is cancer research important? Well, very big point right here. It may save your life. It may save the life of someone you love. Let's get into it. In the United States, 40.5 of men and women will be diagnosed with cancer at some point during, during their lifetimes. This is according to the National Cancer Institute. Let's look at that. Let's, let's analyze that because that is a huge number. That is a scary number when it comes down to it. Let's look at the population. In 2023, U.S. population estimated at 334.9 million according to the U.S. Census Bureau. We're going to apply the percentage to that population. Of course, population changes over time and there's a lot of variables, but we're just going to try to create a snapshot to kind of give you a general view of why this is important. 135.63 million will be diagnosed with cancer. If that population never changes, like this is the population, move forward in time. This exactly, this, that's exactly what will happen if 40.5% 40, 40 persists. Now let's pull it back a little bit because that it's, once again, it's scary, but also at the time, let's take a look at who's at risk. 80.2 of cases are diagnosed in patients older than 55. That's according to the American Cancer Society. All right. So if you're in your 20s, like, all right, maybe I don't have to worry. All right. Like 30s, like, hey, maybe like, all right, 55, just be aware of that when you reach 55 or above. All right. Maybe that's the thought. Let's take a look at all the brackets then. All the brackets. Under 20, 1% under 20. If we apply it to the 135.63 million, that's still 1.3 million people that be diagnosed with cancer. All right, just snapshot, throwing it out there, percentages, numbers, just give you an example, and so on and so on. Of course, you're looking at 55 through uh, 55 and above. That is the majority. Look at those numbers right there. You could see it. And of course, just take in consideration this the like, this is the awareness part right here. This is the awareness part of where like how much at risk you may be. Like one percent. It's like okay, I'm not at risk, but if you still end up being the 1.3 million, you still have it. So. Think of it that way. Think of it, you can think of it, well, think of it any way you want to, but just be aware of that. Just, that's what it is. This is your awareness slide. Now, what does cancer research do? All right, we're talking about this. Like, you, like when we say we're fundraising for cancer research, it feels like, okay, what does that mean? It's like some kind of oblivious terminology or term, cancer research. Like, what is that about? Am I just imagining me looking up on a computer doing research? and like finding data that way, well, here it is. It's, I mean, it's studies, it's um, like, like, what's it called? Clinical trials, all that kind of stuff. All that kind of stuff that goes into this. What does it do? It improves prevention, detection, and treatment of cancer at all levels. And on top of that, it ensures that survivors live longer, have better, have better quality of life. All right, big thing. We're gonna show you some examples of that too. And then it helps identify the causes of cancer and points the way to improve methods of diagnosis and treatment. We're looking at genetics. We're looking at environmental factors. We're looking at lifestyles. So all those pieces, all that research going into it, trying to identify, because if you're able to identify, all right, one piece in the environment that may help you with diagnosis and treatment as well. So all these things, all these things help to so like basically try to eliminate cancer. And the ultimate goal with all this is one, just find the absolute cure to cancer and, lim and, and eliminate it at all levels. Let's talk about the stages now. Stages of cancer. One, or stage zero, abnormal cells are present. All right, so this is different stages. Look at it. This, at, if you're at stage zero cancer, abnormal cells are present but have not spread. Stage one, cancer is small and has only spread a little into nearby tissues but not into the lymph nodes stage two and three cancer is larger or has spread into nearby tissues or lymph nodes and stage four cancer has spread to other areas of the body this is also known as metastatic cancer or advanced cancer when it reaches stage four this is the place this is the stage where cancer is fatal so think of it this way how does research apply well it research applies to all levels here and hopefully and this is the another awareness piece early detection at an early level before it spreads right increases the chance for elimination of cancer in your body so that's an awareness piece right you can one have it surgically removed 
too, whether it's chemotherapy, radiation, just like basically eliminate it through those methods, right? It just zaps it down and then eliminates it. Or, you know, think about the radiation method. Chemo, of course, there's, there's different me methods of chemotherapy. But it happens at all levels. And of course, at stage four, complete elimination might be rare. It does happen, but the idea here is to try to get rid of it. That's the ultimate goal of cancer research. But if not, then we minimize it. And it's like the cancer might be in remission. It might be remission for a, a long period of time. And then the other part of it, and we're gonna show two examples of people that live with stage four cancer, stage four cancer, is to hopefully find a way to prolong life of people that have stage four cancer. So hopefully we can extend the life to the point where we do find a cure. Do find an absolute cure for them and find a way to remove and get rid of the cancer. So that is the ultimate hope, the ultimate goal. And it's all here. And it's all here to, to in, uh, that it's all here to show you what cancer research, the hope of what cancer research can do. Let's talk about the two individuals that, um, that are living with stage four cancer. We had this book, this photography book that we created about what, 2021 profiles. It's called Profiles of Strength, Photography of Breast Cancer Survivors in Fitness. So these are two models that participated in this book where they're, where they're one, we just take the photo and highlight them in a way and have them also share their story, either a story, inspiration, or basically whatever they want to share. Whatever they want to share that might be inspirational or helpful to other people that might be um, dealing with cancer. All right, so Charlene Chow, living with stage four cancer. Um, let's put in a stat, uh, one stat first. The five-year survival rate of stage four breast cancer is 22%. So think about it that way. So Charlene Child, just more background of her. She is one person that helped me become a group fitness instructor. And when she was diagnosed with cancer, I was the person that took over her fitness class at UFC Gym Corona. So that's the background. And um, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. So she has been living with metastatic breast cancer since 2013. She's still alive today, 2024. And during that time, cancer spread throughout her body, lungs, spine, liver, ribs, but she was able to get it to remission after nine months of treatment. That's a long time, but yeah, she was able to get it to remission. Then it came back, tumor, brain cancer, 2016, it came back. So yes, it still exists. Remission doesn't mean it's cured. It doesn't mean it's gone. It can come back. And now she undergoes treatment every three weeks at City of Hope to keep the cancer at bay and to prolong her life. Now she does have a, like, based on her posts, right? Um, when she's feeling great she, and, and she's doing well, she's exercising, she's weight training, she's very active in the community. Um, but yes, that's, the, that's her life right now. Every three weeks she needs to go through treatment to prolong her knife. Just she, I mean, also just more data or more information about her. She is the reason why we've been holding a lot of breast cancer events, fundraising events for cancer research. She is the first, um, first person I held a fundraising event for, for me as a group fitness instructor. And we fundraised to help her pay her bills to get the treatment she needed to put cancer into remission. And then from there on, she was the, uh, the primary inspiration of why we continually fundraise for cancer research, like, yeah, throughout the years, even today. We have two events this coming month. The year right now is 2024. So she's one example. Let's talk about another example. This is Melanie Bernhardt. And before I put in the data, I'm going to read her story that she put in the book. Like in the book, we have an edited version of the story that she wrote. I'm gonna read it to you. It's long, it's long. That's why we couldn't put it in the book, but I'm gonna read it to you what she said unedited so you get an idea of what her life was like or what, or, or what she wrote. So that, let's put it through, let's put it through. Here we go, I'm gonna lower the music a little bit. In 2010, I was diagnosed with stage 2B breast cancer. I went into remission for almost five years after having a double mastectomy, chemo, and radiation. 
While I was in remission, I started doing bikini fitness competitions and I loved it. In 2015, I was diagnosed with stage four metastatic breast cancer. Even though I did everything right, my breast cancer came back and spread. My breast cancer recurred in the skin on my breast even after having a mastectomy and it also spread to my sternum. I learned that about 30% of early stage breast cancer patients will later have their breast cancer return as stage four metastatic. I was training for my fourth bikini fitness competition when my breast cancer had returned and my oncologist wanted me to start chemo again right away. My first chemo treatment ended up being three days before my fitness competition, but I didn't let that stop me from competing. I shaved my head since I knew I would be losing my hair again, went into chemo, and three days after the chemo, I competed. At the competition, I ended up getting two first place trophies, a second place trophy, and a first place sword of place, uh, so, a first place sword, first place sword for placing first place overall for my age category. I was crying tears of joy. I am so grateful to God and all of my family, friends, and coaches that loved and supported me because without them, none of it would have been possible. Since then, I have not competed. I have had about 10 surgeries altogether, and I am still on treatment for my breast cancer, and I will be on treatment indefinitely. I still really enjoy working out, and I go to the gym about five or six days a week. I'm so grateful for all the days that I feel well enough to exercise and to simply be alive and watch my kids grow up. Every single day is a blessing and I encourage you to not take it for granted. I may not know how much time I have left here on earth, but I'm living each day with a grateful heart. So this is what I learned from Melanie during that short time when we we're taking our photo, she, when she came into the room, she literally let it, lit it up. She literally lit it up. Extremely positive, big, huge smile. It was like a completely, uh, I mean, it was, yeah, it, it was a completely positive experience. Like you wouldn't know that she's like dealing with stage four breast cancer. So this is what, this is what I learned from her just in that short conversation right before taking her photos. She is a big supporter of cancer research at metaviver.org. And the reason why is she knows and acknowledges that 100% of donations go straight into research. She, was, she passionately stressed the importance of cancer research to find more treatments. Big thing, here's the reason. Cancer can develop resistance to a treatment. And, you, and when that happens, you will need to find a replacement quickly, right? Especially if you're at stage four. If a treatment could not be found, the patient will die from stage four cancer. And it's unfortunate for me to report, but this is exactly what happened to Melanie. Um, and she, she posted about it on her social media, like the, what, uh, what was going on. And that's, yeah, the, the treatment was no longer working. The one that ex and, like, extended her life for so long was no longer working. Um, they were hoping to find another treatment for her. And around Thanksgiving, she posted, like, this is it. I, I, th I they can't find a treatment. I, it looks like we're out of options. If you would like to come see me, like, come see me like the, the Friday, the day after Thanksgiving, we're going to have an open house. Just let us know you're coming so it's not gonna be overcrowded, whatever it may be. And um, yeah, and like I'd rather spend it with the people that mean something to me um, for my last moments. She passed away on Thanksgiving morning, this last year, 2023. And she's, like she and Charlene Chow is going to be one of the, the two biggest reasons why we are fundraising for cancer research. And the two events that we're holding this month, 2024, October 2024, will be dedicated to uh, cancer research. And I'm going to put the link down below as well. If you want to donate to our campaign specifically, we use that to help track us track like how well we do. But like everything will be donated to either 
cancer research at City of Hope or cancer research through Metaviver. So that is what we're doing to honor um, just like one honor the tradition of what we've what we've established and to also honor Melanie and these words that I've like I've ingrained in my brain which like when I talked to her that day like I didn't forget this I didn't these, these four things that I've bullet pointed this is what she told me it's not written to me this was this is what she told me and it's ingrained in my brain like forever that moment that I talked to her like be before taking her photo um, to end this video I'll end with a quote remember this quote this is a quote for, from Jimmy Volvano. This is from his um, Don't Ever Give Up speech. Let me see, just make sure. Don't, ever, don't Give Up, Don't Ever Give Up speech that he made when he was receiving the Arthur Ashe Award at the 1993 ESPYs. All right? He was so weak. He it was like, he had, like, yeah, he was dealing with cancer. They had to help him. Like, they didn't want him to travel. Like, this doctor didn't even want him to travel. His friends didn't want him to travel. But he still made a point to be there at the ESPY Awards to give the speech, receive the, author, the, the Arthur Ashe Award for Courage, give the speech. He had friends help him up. He was at the podium by, him, by himself. He was noticeably weak, but you couldn't hear it in his voice, right? You I mean, you see it physically as he's standing. You couldn't hear it for his voice. And this speech... This speech, you could say, has saved millions of people. Because this is what he said. Like, well, this is one part that he said. This is the quote. This is the quote that, I, that I'm going to put from that speech. And I'll also put a link to the documentary that I, lo I watched about this and the actual a link to the full speech. This, this is a, 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 a quick piece of it. We need money for research. It may not save my life. It may save my children's lives. It may save someone you love, and it's important. So Jimmy Valvano, legendary basketball basketball um, coach. So look that up. It's an amazing story, and that 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 speech put research in the forefront. It created the V Foundation. Um. And yeah, and that's another great foundation to think about too for cancer research and, and, and the overall fight for cancer. And after he made his speech, he passed away a little less than two months later. But the lead, like, this speech lives on, what he, his legacy lives on because even in his family, he has three daughters. One of his daughters, Jamie, was diagnosed with breast cancer 12 years later after the speech. And she even says that I was the someone he loved. Mentioned that. She, she puts that up there. Um, and she's still, and right currently, she's a survivor. She's a 19 year survivor this year, 2024. So that's all the amazingness that's coming out of his, here. And I'm going to just echo what everyone says that I've received. Like, even in my own life, I've lost my, I lost my brother to stage four brain cancer. And at that time, he only had 1% chance of living. But who knows? what the future may bring as we continually um, support and improve what can be um, what could be done through cancer research so i leave you that i leave this give you with this quote and um and ask you please support cancer research check out the links below and if you have any questions me please let me know if for those of you in southern california san diego or orange county we're holding two events this year to support cancer research and that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching and continuing to support. And, um, yeah, thank you. Sending you, on, sending you on the hearts as well. Thank you so much, so much for all the love and support as always. Without you, we wouldn't be doing what we're doing, one. Um, and without you, we, we can't really, like, together, I'll say that, together we can really make a difference. So thank you once again, guys. We'll see you all next time. Peace out. <laughs>